Hey there, what's up? How's everybody tonight? Gypsy says hello. Danny, hey, hey guys, how's it going? It's good to see y'all. Hope everybody's had a good weekend. Be just a second and we'll get everything started up and going. All right, here we go. So, once again, we're going to be playing Wizardry 7 Crusader to the Dark Savant. This game is a direct sequel to Wizardry 6. So as a direct sequel, in this game, uh, you're able to import your your clear data from Wizardry 6 into the sub, into this game, and that's what we did. And in doing so, where you start in the game uh, can change depending on the circumstances. Um, when we loaded this game up, we started just outside of um, a town called Nyctalinth, which is a city ran by the Terang. Um, not really sure if these guys are good or bad, and leaning towards uh, not so nice. Um, since we've started playing, we've found a way to New City, which is sort of the central hub of this this world, and um, we explored the holy city of Monkarama, and then kind of came back to New City, and we spent the last session really, uh, you know, digging in and exploring a bunch of the town, and we found ourselves in this Curios Museum, which is where we're at now. And this is sort of where we left it. We're not really sure what to do here, so let me back out, and I'm going to kind of go back into the Curio Museum straight from the beginning and we can kind of see what's in here and we'll decide what we're going to do. Danny and Gibbs, hope you guys are having a good evening. So here we are just outside of the Curio Museum. Cobwebs hang like fine tapestry from the ceilings and walls of the dark museum creating the illusion of a gossamer maze. Gradually, your eyes adjust to the dimness, and strange silhouettes can be seen in the shadows of the room. So it seems like in every corner, there's uh, some sort of oddity. Do not touch. Wand majestic. Hovering above a marble pedestal are four glowing balls. The balls are aligned in the form of a pyramid, three at the base in the shape of a triangle, and the fourth on top as the peak. The balls do not appear to be connected to the pedestal in any way and you cannot readily explain how it is that they remain suspended above it. Or even more of even more interest, however, is that within the pyramid floats an ornate and dazzling wand which bathes the area with radiant aura. Jim says, it's a bit okay, just trying to relax. Yeah, I totally get that. So, we have two options with this uh, wand of Majestic. Touch one of the balls, or try to take the wand. So I'm not sure what to do. I feel like if we just try to reach for the wand, might be trapped. Let's uh, let's try to touch one of the balls. I've played this game before, but it's been a long, long time. I don't remember the solution to the puzzle. We can always reload if we have to. Touch one of the balls. Your hand passes through the ball as if it was not there. So it says, do not touch. I feel like it's going to be a bad thing if we touch the wand. Let's try it, though. As your hand reaches into the pyramid, it disappears. Although you cannot see your hand, it is still connected to you, and it feels as if you've just reached inside of a vat filled with oozing slug-like worms crawling all over your digits. Ooh. Leave your hand inside or pull your hand out. Let's leave the hand inside. Feeling around inside the invisible vat of slugs, your fingers detect something hard, round, and slightly heavy. As you grasp the object and retract your hand, something gives you a small burn. 
Trevi is diseased. Quickly pulling your hand from the pyramid, you are relieved to find it is still there. The mysterious one appears quite unaffected by your actions and continues to hover and glow. I found a stone. Well, let's take the stone. Let's take a look at this stone and see what we make of it. The Rebus Egg. Interesting. So Trevi is diseased. That's not good. Twisted heads. An elaborate mural cast in metal hangs from the wall, and sticking out of it in a gross profile are the bronzed heads of three characteristic imps. While there does not appear to be any particular meaning to the abstract background of the relief, you discover that the small burlesque heads can be twisted around. You are surprised to learn that when a head is oriented in one direction, it appears to convey a certain emotion, and by turning it upside down, the original face reverses and extols the opposite expression. Hmm. So obviously this is a puzzle of some sort, which I don't have the answer to. Petrified homunculus. A large crystal dome sits upon a tarnished metal stand, attached to it quite hermetically. Quality of the workmanship is exquisite. There's a gargoyle in there. No dice. Okay. So unfortunately, Trevi is diseased. We don't have any way to cure that right now that I know of. We'll see what happens. Here we have another locked door. Let's check this out. Should be fairly easy access. some Mpani. So with the disease status, I think that means perhaps he... I can't re remember what that means. He doesn't hit as hard or his rest is not as, are not as effective. I don't quite remember. I'm sure it'll be obvious before long. Let's see how hard these guys are. Well, he still hits pretty good. Nothing in this building. Probably nothing in here either, but we'll check it anyways. Now let's get our spells going. So what we're going to do is just explore every building and see what we can find in New City.
bunch of ratkin here. sword there. Probably a base lard or something like that. Let's see. Let's see if we can identify it. Yeah, that's what it is. I don't even want it. Let's get rid of it. So, you know, let me go in here because I believe there was a monk in here who might be able to cure this disease. But we also have a swimming skill now, so we might be able to make it to this uh, statue. You stand inside a large courtyard, serene and calm, and it is a welcome change from the otherwise gloomy city. There is an arched gazebo in the center of the courtyard fountain, and within it stands an ancient statue. Yes, we made it without dying. Standing at the statue, it appears much larger than before. The stone looks fresh, as if it were carved only yesterday, although a thick layer of rust around its base suggests it has been here a long time. Gazing up into the face of the majestic figure, you detect a faint smile, and its eyes seem to almost twinkle. Scraping off the thick rust, you unearth a metal plate at the foot of the statue, engraved as follows. Father Foonzang. Oddly enough, while cleaning the plate, you notice that the middle of the second O in the engraving seems to move out of alignment. It indeed swings open, pivoting at the top, and underneath you find a small opaque stone, apparently concealed here a long time ago. Found a moonstone. Okay. So let's rest. So one thing I noticed right away is Trevi's stamina is not improving as he rests. So perhaps that is the effect of the disease. Danny says, sorry, I'm back. Welcome back, Danny. But I think, don't we have a spell that will rest him anyways? Did that, did that improve his, uh, his stamina? I'm not sure. Barely. Looks like it barely did it. Just a little bit. What else do we have here? Happy St. Patrick's Day. Hey, Sigarth, how you doing? Happy St. Patrick's Day to everybody. Alright, so everybody has rested enough here. Oh, who died? Who, kidding me? Trevi drowned? Oh, you, oh no, look at that. Hmm. Darn. Well, let's bring him back. That disease status, I've got to try to clear that as fast as we can. And he's paralyzed. Oh, he's paralyzed. Interesting. So let's rest. Let's try to fix that. Let's see if we can heal that. Nope. 
Hopefully this monk in here can do something with it. Let's see. Jip says, how are you going to get his stamina up? Well, we can get his stamina up a couple different ways. Uh, we can use the Restful spell. Um, but right now he's paralyzed, so it's not doing any good. Yes. Hmm. I don't know the answer. Say all. You shall receive in accordance with what you have given. Enter here and follow the path before you. Does that mean they took all my money? Yep. So we have a new path that didn't exist before, and it's a fountain. And it cured him completely. Fantastic. So I guess if you give just a little, maybe it just heals hit points or something like that. So we're completely broke now. That's the side effect. But Trivi's back to normal. I had a feeling there'd be something in here like that. Now we just have no money, that's the only thing. Okay, well, better than nothing. We'll get money. We have another little room with nothing in it. So there's a few things in New City here that we want to solve. We still have that Curio Museum that we started in today, and then there's the computer terminal that we found in the Forbidden Zone. We have to figure out how to make that work. Some more Ratkin here. So when I notice I dropped that sword, and you can see it's down here. Still there for the taking. I wonder if it'll be there if we come back. Yep. save it. Let's do a little snooping around. Can we get in here? Not a chance. Not a chance. A vivid red emblem has been attached to the door, so we know this is going to be a um, room with some of those savant guardians in it. Gypsy says, you always want to keep your spells up or just part of the time. So, it's never a bad idea to have them up, um, but at this point where we're at right now, I feel relatively safe here. So unless I'm going into a room like we're about to, I don't stress too much about keeping them up all the time. Um, but as we get to you know newer places, unexplored areas, 
probably be a real good idea to keep them up. Seto Cat says, hello. Hey, Seto. Thanks for joining. So with that in mind, with what Gypsy said in mind, let's go ahead and get our spells up. Get that enchanted blade up. And we'll get that detect secret up. Probably going to be an encounter with some savant guards here. Just two. It's not bad. We can take these guys pretty easy. So I hope you had a good St. Patrick's Day. Settle Cat says, how y'all? We're doing good. I'm doing good. The bunker is crude and dirty, apparently serving as a small guard station for the Savant Legions. In the quiet of the aftermath, just barely audible, you can hear a continual eep eep sound coming from somewhere. Alright, so there's something in the room. Let's look for it. Alright, so we see detect secrets going off. So let's search. You find a thin, flexible wafer, which has apparently fallen to the floor sometime earlier, the source of the faint tone. It is inscribed as follows. E-T-X-B-Y-Y-R. Let's take a picture of that. Might need that later. It might be an identification tag of some kind, but what a very odd name indeed. So we have a black wafer. I think maybe this goes in that computer. What do you think? Let's check out these other buildings up here. New City Library. A vivid red emblem has been attached to the door. The symbols which is not clear. So probably more savant guards in here. Cautiously, you look around, wary of the foreboding emblem, which has marked the front of the library door. The interior of the library is quite dusty and cluttered, being filled with shelves of books and old scrolls. It would require days to search through them all, and even then it is unlikely that anything here would be of much use. For some reason, you turn and cast a glance sideways toward the north end of the room, and there, perched slightly apart, from the volumes around it, you spy a dark red book. But suddenly, you are startled by a gaunt figure of one of the ghoulish savant guards, unearthly still, uncannily poised in the corner besides the shelf on which the book rests. Ready to jump into action, yet still frozen where you stand, before you can react, your senses tell you that there is something peculiar about the situation. Within the heartbeat of the next moment, you can see that the dreaded guardian is not reacting, nor making motions of any kind. Whether it is entranced or dead or asleep, you cannot tell. Perhaps there is some secret power or weakness to which it has succumbed. Whatever has affected it, you start breathing again and find that it is totally oblivious to your presence. Silently cursing yourselves as fools, you carefully approach the dormant savant guard. Sure enough, it seems to be deactivated in some fashion. And there on the shelf before you, the dark red book beckons. Try to take the book, attack the dormant guard. Let's try to take the book. Lulu will try. Your, <laughs> your actions have awakened the guard. Oh well. So I'm assuming if Lulu's uh, thieving skills were higher, we might have been able to pull this off. So it's just one savant controller, and we beat a couple of these before, so this should be okay. But we know this guy here has some nasty uh, spells at his disposal. But acid seem to work really good on these guys. What do we have? Let's try to... Mm. Let's try to bind him. Oh, wow. That was fortunate. Look at that. A critical hit. Killed him on the spot.
Having vanquished the Guardian, the book is yours. I found a book. Alright, so we're going to take the book. Danny's going to take a look at this book. Actually, no, nope, I don't want to cast a spell. Let's see what this is. Book. Read. The Witch's Tale. Once upon a time, there was a, god, a goodly witch by the name of Helinda, who was very powerful and beautiful. She lived high upon a mountain, ruled all the lands far below her, below her and as far as the eye could see. Being a fair and just witch, she was provider and benefactor for all the animals dwelling within her domain and often appeared to passing strangers in times of need. She had been born of parents who were also witches and had inherited the power to foretell the future, a very rare and special gift, even for a witch. But coming from a family of witches, she was not an only child. Four sisters, envious of her beauty and jealous of her power, also lived in the mountain. And as every day passed, they became more and more resentful of her popularity and her goodness. So the four sisters banded together and decided that they would undo all of the good that Helinda had done and torment her and be just as nasty as they could. And the four sisters took upon themselves the names of the north, the south, the east, and the west, so they would cover all the lands around them and ensure that no foul deed would go undone. But for every dirty trick, for every heinous crime, for every bit of badness that they could do, Helinda was always there to thwart them and turn their horrible deeds into good ones. For remember, Helinda could see into the future and always knew what her sisters were going to do, even before they themselves knew. And so the day finally came when the four sisters said enough was enough, and the time had come for them to put a stop to Helinda once and for all. One night, while Helinda lay sleeping, dreaming of good things, they sneaked into her chamber and invoked a terrible magic spell upon her. They cast a spell to steal her face. Her beautiful face, her nose, her mouth, her ears, and her enchanted eyes were severed and plucked from her, and each of the sisters took a part of Helinda's face, so that... Then they would all have a share in her sister's magical power and of her beauty. But Helinda was wise to them and had foreseen what her sisters had been planning to do, and that night before she slept she anointed herself with a special potion, which turned her face into gold. And when her mouth, her nose, her ears, and her eyes were stolen, it did not hurt her, and she did not die. And because her features were no longer flesh and blood, each of the four sisters' faces were replaced with a part of gold. But Helinda was cut off from the outside world, alone and with no face. The four sisters now rule the mountains and terrorize the surrounding land and do all kinds of horrible things. And to repay Helinda for their cleverness, for her cleverness, and cursing them with a feature of gold, every night they torment her, sending demons and spooks and ghouls and fiends to poke and tear at her, and make her feel just awful. They say that the five sisters still live in those mountains, and that every night. Just before witching hour, if you look through the witching glass, you can see the spirits come down into the forest, dancing their dance of torture, cruelty, and pain around Helinda. And that to this very day, she still roams the mountains, waiting for someone to make her whole and beautiful again, waiting for someone to bring back her face. Interesting. I wonder if that's an encounter that we'll have later in the game. Behind a flutter of papers inside the inner chamber of the library, you surprise an old, gray, rat-like creature who apparently does not like surprises. Eek. Who are you? Why can't you leave me to work in peace? Besides, I gave the city blueprints to the strangers that were here just before you, if that's what you're looking for. Now leave me alone. Professor Wonderland. Let's try to talk to him. Hello, yes. Who are you? I am Professor Wonderland. Blueprints. The blueprints of the old city, a part of my records on our history. Old city. The history of old city. That's what I've been researching. Listen, and I'll tell you what I've learned. A long time ago, everyone lived together here, all in the same city, Old City. Life was simple for our ancestors, and there was a common purpose, to fulfill the law of something called the Sacred Stone. But as time went on, there was a disagreement upon the meaning of the sacred writing. 
Everyone began having different ideas, and they began to fight amongst themselves. Different groups were formed, each claiming to represent the one true interpretation of the sacred stone. In time, each faction created their own version of the sacred stone, rewriting it to conform with their own beliefs. The original sacred stone was lost, obscured, and forgotten. Eventually, all anyone knew was dependent upon the beliefs of the faction unto which they were born. Naturally, the different factions began to separate. Soon, newer cities were constructed in the surrounding regions. An old city was abandoned. All evidence of our original common ancestry disappeared. There were wars. The simple life had come to an end, and each faction began to evolve in an entirely different way. Some believed that this was bad. Others claimed it was all foretold. And a few others yet say that this is all as it should be. Hundreds of years passed, and one day a strange thing occurred. A group of strangers appeared calling themselves the Hegardi. They said they came from the mountains which they had been living in the ages since the fall of Old City. They had achieved great scientific wonders, and they wished to share the knowledge with all. Elphine says, Retkin ruins. Maybe. A common ground was needed for all the differing factions to meet with a Hagardi, and so new city was construction, constructed and was built on top of Old City. Then, as suddenly as they had appeared, the Hagardi vanished. No one knows exactly what happened. There must have been some purpose, but no one knows what it is. And so then, at last, here we are. Interesting. Sacred stone. It is the sacred law created at the beginning of time. Hegardi. They were very mysterious. We know little about them. Mountain. Old city. Oh, no, no, no. Don't do it. Don't do it. Ah, I messed up. Now he's going to repeat the whole thing again. So while he does that, I'll mention we found what looked like access to Old City in the south. The south part of the map here, there was a, a sign that looked like it said Old City. So I wonder how to get in there. If he ever stops talking, I'll ask him. Elfine says, Ratkin ruins... So yeah, the Ratkin ruins, I believe, are where the Ratkin are from, if I'm not mistaken. I'm sure we'll be visiting there. First time chat for Alfine as well. Thanks for tuning in and watching. If you have any questions about the game, feel free to drop it in. I'll do my best to answer. I've played this game multiple times over the years. Um, back when it was new, and as recently as about 10 or 12 years ago. So it's been a while. So we've learned a couple new things here. I wonder if the sacred stone is related to the holy work that the monks are interested in. It seems like every faction has something. Let's see what else this guy knows. The savant. Kui sa ka, except the nature of our kind. Oh, interesting. The Dane. The Dane should be slowly nulled. Okay, so we know the Ratkin are not friends to the Dane. The monk should, they don't like the monk either. So, the loyalties of Ratkin are starting to come clear. Let's see. Dark Savant. Dread Rule of the Galaxies. Hmm. What does this guy have? So all we can do is give him stuff, huh? Oh, well, he'll take it. Interesting. All right, 
so we'll remember that he's here. We have yet another door. Nothing in this room. So now I'm very interested in trying to get into Old City. A couple savant guards, or a handful of savant guards here. Nothing we can't handle. always nice when, when Sato breathes on somebody and they actually die. And I just noticed these rooms down here in the, uh, the abbey that we didn't open before. What's in here? It's locked. Let's see what we can do. nothing. Single savant guard. a treasure chest. Let's see. And so we know something's here. Could be a sonic bolt. Has to be a sonic bolt. So let's try this. Very good. Found a scroll, a potion, a powder, 16 wands. We'll see how much of this Danny can identify on her own. Probably not much. Yeah, I don't think so. All right. Identify. Uh, okay, so we got to do it like that, huh? Danny has to be holding, or the, the caster has to be holding the item. You can just get rid of that. You know, this white bear here, who had that? Claire? We found that at the Polar Monk Society. Look at that. Where we um, practice swimming. Wonder what that did. Wow, it looks like it increased swimming. Okay. Well, Claire's the, the expert swimmer now. Almost done. We're going to have um, Seto identify a bunch of stuff for us. Sparkle sticks.
can't identify the book, though. Knock, knock. Spell. Haste scroll. And we'll have to come back to the rest when we have more magic points. Right, so the Savant stole the blueprints to Old City, which we found somewhere down here, if I'm not mistaken. I don't remember where we said we found it. Yeah, it was through here, right? The condemned area. it was in here. Yep, that was it. We need something to put in here. So let's check out the Forbidden Zone, which I think was in here. Let's see what we can do with that black wafer. We'll see if that does anything yet. So we had to use the control card to get in. And let's try the black wafer here. So that was a, a bust. Really thought that was going to work. Okay, so is that just about everything? We couldn't get in to here, I don't believe. We'll try it again, but I don't think we were able to pick the lock to the jail. Oh yeah, so let's look. Let's look here. We took that picture. Maybe there's a clue. So the code was like E-T-X-B-Y-Y-R. Could that be blue, yellow, yellow, red? Let's try it. That worked. The prison, like all cages and chambers of confinement, is desolate and somber, and the air is thick with the stale odor of unhealthiness. Its construction is simple and plain, but quite adequate to be effective nonetheless, serving all too well its ultimate intent to slowly drain the life of those who are deemed threatening or undesirable to the currently prevailing powers that be. So if you remember, when we first visited a new city, we were walking down this alley here, and somebody whispered through one of the bars, said they wanted out. You find a key hanging upon the wall. So, <clears throat> we're going to open these cells one by one. I'm sure some of them hold encounters that um, could be dangerous. And then I think one of them will be that person who wanted, uh, who was begging for release. So we're going to rest up before we start opening cell doors. Let's get these spells rolling.
see what we encountered. Some bugs, boar weevils. Lulu's gonna try to put the three to sleep, the group of three. I think Sato's just gonna rest this one out, and Danny's gonna go ahead and cast a magic missile on the three, and let's see what happens. It wasn't too bad. These boar weevils are kind of tough, though. Oh, and they poison. And they paralyze. Oh, and they hurt really bad. Good lord. Claire's out. Alright, so Trevi... Let's try to put the boar weevils to sleep and let's make quick work of these guys. These are bad news. Do a blades. We're gonna do a fireball too. Pretty good hit from fireball. Didn't kill him though. Blades did the trick. There we go. And Danny has leveled up. Mm -hmm. and let's put some more into this artifact skill. So, all right, what do we have? Wizard Eye, Spooks. Magic screen, conservation, missile shield, shrill sound, stink bomb, ice ball. Man, ice ball is good to have. I'm just going to go ahead and take it because I'm pretty basic like that. Let's get. Somebody else has an amulet of life besides Claire, I'm pretty sure. that on Claire. Let's go ahead and cure this poison. Let's try to cure the paralysis too. There we go. Reorganize the party and let's rest. After that we need a rest. Let me save, actually, before we rest. Great, another fight. Just some savant guard shouldn't be too bad. Please don't hit Claire, that's all I ask. Whew. One down. And Seto's awake now too, so we're gonna heal Claire. There we go. Just want to get Claire's stamina up a hair. Okay. Let's do a little bit of this. Okay, we'll try the next room. I think this was actually the the window that the person was pleading for release. No effect. Oh, that one's empty. So 
something will be behind this door. A prison cell is occupied by a very rotund and somewhat unattractive creature, although his demeanor does not appear hostile. Let's see this rotund creature. It's a Gorn. I am in your debt. I was betrayed by a gang of assassins, spies that were searching for Orkogar Castle, our secret fortress hidden in... Oops. Uh, <laughs> perhaps we should get out of here before more of the guards arrive. Captain Beauregard. Talk. Who are you? I am Beauregard, a captain of the mighty Gorn army. Hope I spelled that right. The location of Orc Ogre Castle is a well-kept secret known by only a handful of outsiders. But now I have need of your help and must reveal it to you. You must swear never to tell it to anyone. Will you vow never to reveal what I tell you? Yes. A plot has been un unleashed by those who would envisage the destruction of the mighty Gorn Empire. We survived the years of war with the Dane and Monk because we were stronger. But now new forces have appeared that seek to sway and inflame our old enemies. I will attempt to find the traitors who deceived me before they can reveal the location of Orkogar Castle. But you must travel to the castle and warn the king. Oh, we have a new quest. Tell him the D'Artagnan alliance is broken. Can you take a picture of that? The D'Artagnan alliance is broken. He will understand its meaning and know what to do. East of New City, if you follow the road that forks northward, you will enter our lands. The border is guarded by a special division of Gorn of the Gorn army under the command of Great Lord Galeri. Galer. He is loyal to the king and will allow you passage if you present him with this letter. From there, make your way westward through the forest. I think we met him once, didn't we? Be on the lookout for the entry and a small clearing. It is a difficult journey, but you should be able to reach it in a day or so. Ugba be with you. So now we have a new place to go. Orc Ogre Castle. Okay. So there's still some loose ends here in New City. But I think, you know, maybe for the time being, we've done about all we can do. I do want to make one more trip up here to the Abbey. Because I want to talk to this monk and I want to mention some things like holy works and things that we learned in Monk Harama. Also see what's in these two doors. see if he has any insight into the holy works there's so much we have like so many leads in front of us now I'm not really sure which way to go right sell some things that I don't want to get some of her money back here. He's not going to give me much, I'm sure. Okay. Alright, so with that being done, I think it's time to head out of New City.
so I still know, I know that there's still plenty of things to do in Monkarama. But at this point, I think it's things that we'll have to return to, perhaps. So I think what we're going to do now is we're going to head up to Orc Ogre Castle. I don't think in tonight's stream we're going to explore much of it, if any. But we at least can get there, right? Also, something just occurred to me. Let's save the game. Let's take a look at this letter. The bearer of this letter keeps urgent news of the Empire. Okay. Alright. So nothing special. No good inside information. Oops. So this was the way to work over woods. Somewhere along the path up here, I think like right here where the map ends is where we had the encounter with uh, Galeri or Galer, whatever his name is last time, and he told us to leave. Yep, here we are. Yet more of your kind who come to plague us. These lands belong to the Gorn Empire, and we shall protect them unto the last. Turn back, and we shall leave you in peace. Enter and die. Do you show Lord Lair the letter from Captain Burgard? Yes. I see by this letter you bring important news of the Empire to the King. Very well, then, I shall be. you shall be allowed to pass. But be warned, much has happened here recently, and I cannot guarantee your safety. Civil war has erupted amongst our people. A band of assassins infiltrating Orgogre Castle has slain the great wizard Mercatos. With Mercatos dead, his spell is no longer able to protect our lands and keep the peace between us. Hordes of dissenting tribes have begun to gather in the surrounding fields. My army must remain here, ready for the battle that is soon to begin. Gorn against Gorn, brother against brother, and blood against blood. Trust no one and be wary, for the prophets will dance this night upon all our graves. Very nice. Mercatos, was it? Poor Mercatos, once the great wizard of the Gorn, now a pile of bones. King Olgar, lord of the mighty Gorn Empire. Civil war. Civil war has befallen the land of the Gorn. Let's see. Anything else to ask him? I can't think of anything. What does he have to sell us? Some armor, maybe? Don't think we have very much. Not really. Alright. So we'll leave him here. And before we proceed northward, I think I'll save the game and probably end the stream here tonight. Um, when I play tomorrow, we'll proceed onward into Orc Ogre Castle, and we'll see what there is to see there. Um, I feel like throughout the course of the game there'll be a lot of back and forth going back to New City going back to Monkarama vice versa as we learn more information find new things uh, we'll continue to hit these places and unlock you know more information new storyline elements but this is a good stopping point tonight thanks for tuning in as we finished our exploration of New City for the most part um, tomorrow when we resume we'll have a whole new place to explore so again thanks for watching I hope everybody has a good evening and I'll see you tomorrow.